Oh, oh. oh yes. Look, look in there. Lovely. Right, come on. Let's uh, start the episode. Here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the All Right Podcast. Remember, it's not the best podcast, not the worst podcast. It's just the All Right Podcast. Hello, episode 81. Really? We done episode 80 last week. How? I don't know. Where did the time go? I guarantee you, though, if I didn't stop for a while, I would have been well over 100. Oh, yeah. But I'm glad that the 100th episode that's going to lead up is going to be with you. Aw, thanks for mm. having me on board. You're welcome, you're welcome. So, today, what are we talking about, Nicola? First of all, where are we? We are in Krispy Kreme. Now, and as you've seen there, Krispy Kreme, we're usually in Starbucks, okay? Um, we usually go to Starbucks every Saturday. And we sit there and we do the podcast and we put the camera up on here and we do it for a half an hour and so. And we have a little panini before. Yes. A panini But nice. this week is a very special episode. Yes. You know but why? Why? We're talking about the Hitmen. Bum bum. I love to have music over the phone. Yeah, because on, usually on Saturdays what we do is, is that we record a podcast, but we couldn't record yesterday because we had... A radio interview. Hmm. That... Well, literally, there's a link down in the description below, probably to to it now, because by the time this comes out, yeah, it'll be out on Monday morning. So yeah, Monday morning. This this comes out. Uh, this podcast comes out at six p.m. every Monday. So and um, the the radio station always comes out, and you can watch it back. Yeah. Um, from we'll three to four podcast. o'clock. So hopefully we'll have the link down in the description below where you can go listen to that um part uh, interview the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, with the podcast yeah. and and stuff like that. But it was a radio interview for. The Hitmen and our Funded campaign. So, if you didn't know already, we have a fundraiser set up on Funded mm. to help us purchase all the essential items we need to mm. make the Hitmen. Such as? These items include special effects makeup, prosthetic body parts, locations, wardrobe, film equipment, so many more stuff. <laughs> when you see all the words, I'm going to edit into that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah. we have a lot. Yeah, so I suppose the crew of the Dream Factory Productions, we didn't just pull figures out of the air. We sat down, we went through everything we needed for this film, we totaled up our budget, and mm. there we have it. That's how much we That's need how much we to need. make this film. We need €2,500. Euro to make this short film yeah. and a lot of people that watch this go whoa that's a lot of money but yeah. in the film industry that's zero that's very little compared that's like to a Hollywood. euro not yeah. even that's a few cents think of the millions they spend making all those Hollywood yeah. films it's crazy and this is the first time ever that we're going to be asking for funds uh, because we're yeah. usually sh- we are F- uh, past films we've made four films so far and a new film is going to be coming out called Widespread that'll be coming out in May and June anyway mm-hmm. um, what's it? Summer. Summer. Summertime. We won't give um, details yet. Yeah, won't give details. You'll know when we do, if we do a podcast or so. Um, but, yeah, this is the first time, because usually we don't, we only, like, have to spend about €100 Euro on well, our short not films. Not even that, even. because all of our other short films, we had all the cameras, the lights, microphones, everything we mm. needed, actors. We had everything we needed, so it, the costs were very low. Mm. But for this film here, it's so much bigger. We have about 24 uh, cast members we have 17 crew members yeah. we just like all that that goes with it because we want to make this the best it can be we need to yeah. get all those special effects makeup the equipment the yeah. wardrobe exactly. everything we need and we want this film to do well we want to show people of us with the Dream Factory Productions what we're capable of doing and that uh, if we can pull off this film with 2,500, hopefully for our, our future films, we can get more money to fund. Do you get me to fund them with mm. more money? But um, for now, we just want to get our budget. That's all we want for this goal. We're not thinking about down the line. We're thinking about now, what we're doing now. We're making the Hitmen. That's what we want to do. Yeah. So we want to try to film that in, this summer and you know get it finished and get it done and for everyone to be and send proud it off of the it. film festivals yeah we want to enter into the sundance film festival and that's a big film festival of in america and i believe that every single person that we have involved are capable of helping us do that oh of course like the amount of talent and experience we have between the cast and the crew like there's nothing else like it because mm. everyone knows their stuff they know what they're doing they're experienced in their line of work like we couldn't ask for a better team. Yeah, that's true. And everybody gets on with each other, though the chemistry so well as also. Yeah. Um, but I want to kind of 
to go back to the start of when I kind of made the Hitmen, you know, mm. kind of give you a bit of a background about it. I started with the idea of the Hitmen in 2015. In March, that's so this month, ago. so that's six years ago, and it was just an idea, and I kind of wrote out a script, and it was a ten-minute script, and that was the full film. And since then, when I went back to it, we went back to it last year, mm. and I've only finished the final draft in February. February, yeah. Um, I've learned so much about character development and structure, the story structure, and so, and I think it's just. Thank God I didn't film it back then. Yeah. Because it's so fucking good now and there's so much potential yeah. for it. All the characters have been developed and the storylines there are all tied up so there's no loose ends. You know, yeah. everything is, you know, recorded from start to finish and the way the script is now, you know, it's it's perfect. It's the final draft. I like it. Yeah. It's the best that I can be and I've... Uh, I stand behind that. Yeah. Um, some people were helping me with the script and so like that. Yourself, Marcus, was helping me with the script and the story structure. And I took pointers from you, but I also said, you know what? I also believe in these characters and I know what these characters like. So I took as much of the voice as I could. But I want to talk about the audition stage. The auditions, yeah. So I suppose we started looking at the pre-production for this film in March 2020 yeah. we had a group meeting and you know we all agreed right we're doing you know we had just finished the lotto ticket at that stage and we were moving on to our next project so we said right we're going to do the hitmen next yeah. um, we started making flyers and audition posters and we were going to host the auditions on the 11th of April I remember that date mm. and we were going to book out a hotel room and we'd do all that get everyone in but lockdown happened and we couldn't do any of that. No, we and it was so people. sad because yeah. we we had this ready and going and we as you said we made the flyers and you know every all the preparation. But what's that's what happens in a in a production. Yeah. You always will have a plan B. Yeah. But at the same time as well, thinking back to how much work went into the actual auditions yeah. that we done in September, yeah. there's no way we could have done that in that's March September. in that short time frame. So yeah, we done online auditions in September. Um, we booked out a hotel room with me, you, Sarah and James. You know, it took us two full days to go through all the auditions. There was over 150 people. Yeah, who and initially it took us from, we'd have to get up around 7 o'clock, half 7 every morning, get our shower, get our breakfast and be ready on Google Meets, wasn't Google it? Google Meets, yeah, Google for Meets nine for 9 o'clock. And we'd have, literally from 9 o'clock till 6 o'clock every day. In some day. cases we went until 7 or 8. I remember, I think on Saturday evening we went up to near seven o'clock yeah I think. and then we were all yeah we were just wrecked after. because every every person had a 10 minute slot so we were only we could only give people 10 minutes to audition mm. so you know we were flying through people you know within the hour so you know it was just a lot a lot of work on us yeah and some people didn't even show up or they couldn't um but there was more people showing up than there wasn't oh, yeah, people showing yeah. up. You know, like, we got a big, big reaction. We were kept that. busy for the whole two days, and we were just like amazed with the amount of people that applied and the amount of talented people mm. that we had. And speaking of talented people, mm. I want to talk about the two main hitmen. Yeah, so I suppose after we done those initial auditions, we done second round auditions, yeah. where we came up with five people for each role, and we narrowed it down, and we said, right, we want these five people to audition again, and from there we picked our final people. Yeah. So. We ended up picking Connor Hamill and Keen Colbert for the two main hitmen. And let me tell you something, right? We knew Connor straight away. We didn't, sorry, we didn't no. know him. We knew that Connor would be the right choice for well, Michael. Well, you did. I did. The anyway. rest of us didn't. Right. Well, no, for, not that we didn't. No, for Connor. Oh, Connor, sorry. Yeah, yes, for yeah. Connor. And we, we were all saying that he had a certain laugh yeah. that he done and, you know, and he just... He, the way he acted on yeah. screen. I remember the four of us sitting down and we were doing the second round auditions and he done this laugh and the four of us were literally like, that's it. Yeah. He has the part. He, he just shows yeah. the character himself. And also, we had Kane. And let me tell you a story about Kane and how Kane got picked. Mm. There was, it was between Kane and another guy. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to say the other guy, just, you know, in yeah. case he watches. So, uh, it was between Kane and another guy. And I knew, watching Kane's audition, when he was doing it, I was like, he reminds me of a young, young Robert Sheenan, or Sheenan, I, I don't know his don't second know his name, name, I'm very bad. Correct but he played Darren in Love Hay, he, he was in Misfits, he's the Irish lad, he's been in lots of films, he's in the Umbrella Academy Is he the guy well. that says, for a slice of cheese? Cheese, yeah. Oh, yeah. He reminded me of him, right? Yeah. And I was like, he has timing, really good timing, he, the comic 
you can bring out comedy in it as well yeah. but we've also watched um, we'll talk about this in a bit with rehearsals and mm. so how rehearsals are going on but I also knew that right he could play a serious role as well and mm. you needed that for this you film you two types of people yeah to yeah. play that and they, I knew they'd bounce off each other so well yeah but I suppose you literally had to stand up on the chair and convince me James and Sarah that he was the I person for this I role. literally stood up and went Right, listen, I know we're going with this fella, but please, let me just say what I need to say about Kane yeah. and then we'll 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 leave at that and if you don't if you still feel strongly about the other person, then we'll leave at that. And I got up on the table and goes, he has co- good comedy time and he used this, his facial expressions, the way he says it, the way his words are, the way when he talks with his dialogue, his voice goes up and like the way he does things. Mm. And it's just certain look with his hair that's yeah. long back, you know. And you proved us all wrong. I did prove yeah. us wrong. Yeah. And I just want to say, I proved us all wrong. It's yeah. case James and Sarah watched that. But I think they, they also, you also did say, listen, at the end of the day. It was the right choice, yeah. It, it's like, your no film. No one could do it better than. Yeah, you'd said yeah. it's your film, and if you want to do that, but if you want, we don't mind. And I goes, listen, we all do this, we're all in this together, so if you decide that, no, we won't get them, but I convinced you. Yeah. And thank. Fuck, I convinced yeah. you this because them two work so well together and rehearsals are going so yeah. well. But also, um, there's a character called Michelle Robinson. Yeah. And she's supposed to be, um, she's played by Rebecca, Rebecca Fisher. Yeah. And what happened is, is that we needed to get someone that was kind of, you know, small, yeah. not, not tall, small, innocent kind of looking and they have to be beautiful yeah. you have to be good looking yeah. and um but when she was acting i was like holy shit she's really mm. fucking good uh, but we didn't audition her it was james and yeah, sarah, james that, and, sarah they, had auditioned. and the minute they finished with her we finished with someone else and we had a break for like 10 minutes yeah. or so and what they came in and goes oh my god you need to watch this girl she's so good she's yeah. re-. and we goes right let's see her and we looked at her and we goes right well she she fits what we're looking for yeah. and he goes no she's a really good actor yeah they literally they they could not like recommend her highly enough they were yeah. like you have to pick her like there's no one else suited yeah. for this part you just have to yeah so we were like right fair enough and then we went down and we got. To, we didn't even get her to do second auditions, did we? Not? No, we left it up to James and Sarah to decide, and they they picked. picked her. They yeah. picked her. Yeah. So thank God they picked her because, as I said, with rehearsals, we get into it in a bit. And um, we also have um, MJ O'Sullivan. Yeah. Also, that'll be playing um, old Ben Walsh. Yeah, or so. old Michael Kelly. Which one? <laughs> we don't know. You'll have, have to watch and see. You'll have to watch and see. Um, so what happens is is that he was very good. James and Sarah got him as well. Yeah. They auditioned him. He goes, he's really talented. He's real good, and he's he knows what he's talking about as well when it comes to film. And so he yeah. has a lot of experience, experience in film. Yeah. Um, but he seemed very professional, mm. and for his character and that type of style and look that he has, and the way he can project his voice on screen, yeah. I was like, and that kind of he can give that kind of intimidating look. Mm. I was like. I think I think that's he's, right. He's perfect he, for the role. He's perfect for it. Yeah. Yeah. And we done that, but also we had to pick um what Joe Sharkey. Yeah. Uh Joseph Sharkey or Joe Sharkey, whatever you, I think he goes by Joe Sharkey. Um and he plays Mark Boyle, the counsellor. And I knew it was it us it was us. It was, yeah. And I goes, I have a really good feeling about him. Yeah. I have a really good feeling. Um he did apply for the hitmen as well. Uh, one of the hitmen, mm. um, but we felt like we, yeah. we just felt that Connor would have been more suited for the role. But then I said to you, as I goes, listen, I really like Joe. Yeah, I we need to we need to put him in as a character. When we were doing those auditions, we were only auditioning for the six main characters. So we have uh, Michael Kelly, Ben Walsh, Old Ben, Vanessa. Um, Michelle and Jake so we were auditioning for those six characters yeah. we didn't um, look for people for all the other characters that are involved you know we said we'd, we'd look at those after but th- there are six main characters or seven so yeah. when um, Joe Sharkey auditioned we we were you know we he we were like looking for a certain role as well and we had said right he would fit that role of the counsellor I know we weren't looking for him on that day yeah. but we because ha- we, we knew the script we knew that we needed a counsellor yeah. and we were like right he could do that role because yeah. the way he's his his voice comes across and he's you know real sympathetic and he's concerned about all his his members in the group you know yeah. we were like right 
he would be perfect for yeah, that. Yeah, I think so. And I think that he's very talented, so I wanted him in the film anyway. Yeah. Like I was sorry, he's really talented. Um the last one we have now as well was uh Vanessa Watts and that's played by Kelly. Yeah. As well. And um we found out that Kelly um was really talented and at the start we, we kinda had to you know where everybody we kind of had to guide people into certain and what how to what way to act and so and she picked it up like that yeah she, she did. picked it up straight away so yeah. she was really really good and, and because of the role she's playing like she's playing a russian woman so to try and do a russian accent is a challenge for mm. anyone because it, you know you need to do it properly in order to you know convince the audience that you're russian yeah. so she's after picking it up straight away and yeah you know she can play that part to a T. Yeah, so that's that's our characters, um, and that's the people that'll be playing it. Um, also, we have one more, and we have um, our own um, man in the Dream Faction Productions, James Bourne, mm. and he's going to be playing um, Billy O'Shea. Billy O'Shea, and that's a character to watch. That's a great character. And that's great. a great character to watch. So we better stop um, before we give the whole well, story no, away. No, 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 no. I know what to do. Great character. And um, James has now been learning his lines, mm. and you know because he has to balance being an assistant director and, and being an actor an in the film, so yeah. it is hard. And um, so, well done, to James. Uh, he, <laughs> <laughs> I sounded like the fella of Gogglebox. And now over to, um, yeah, but that that's it on them people. And when we started, uh, when we finished all that, we've done rehearsals then. Yeah, so we started rehearsals in early January of this year and again they're online so we do those every friday online and initially i suppose we ran through the script with everyone so everyone attended for the first couple of weeks and since then we've broke it out into scene by scene so we're only asking those who are in that scene to join for that week yeah so i think that way of working has definitely benefited us because we get to work one-on-one -on -one with the actors for that scene oh much better yeah it's so much it's better for us and it's better for them because they can ask us questions we can give them advice and it just it makes them become more familiar with their character and become their characters yeah actually. like I, I i realized that when we were doing the big um we we, we would for about for the force Three two weeks. three weeks two yeah. three weeks so it's about three weeks we read the whole script to everybody and everybody would you know only be in one scene so they'd have to like watch everybody else so yeah. I think the breakup of we structured it out for five weeks you did you you structured it out for five weeks and we were as you said we were able to focus on them people individually individually yeah. and be able to give them more support yeah and we were writing down on the script and then every time they finished doing their same we gave them feedback and they took the feedback yeah and their characters have developed so much mm. since the first time we've done it like we done um rehearsals just last week on friday yeah so just before you say that so for the first five weeks we've gone through the whole script now we're into our second round of five weeks we just finished week one last friday yeah. so do you want to say yeah and that was with no script yeah they have to learn it now with no script so they need to know every dialogue in their scenes and they do so far that we know of yeah. um and so what happened was is that Kane, Connor, and uh, Rebecca yeah. all had to act. When I'm telling you that I did not want to go off uh, Google Meets because yeah. watching them, oh, it was on Zoom I was watching them. Well, on video call. You need to stop saying Zoom. <laughs> oh, sorry. On Google Map. On Google. Google Map. <laughs> sorry. Google well, Meets. Meet. Video sorry. call. Just say video call. Video call. Sorry. Right. Jesus. And <laughs> um, on video call. And they had to act out their scenes. And it's very hard because James said it in there that sometimes because James is in a college right now doing acting. And he's doing a course. And he said that on video call yeah um, <laughs> it can be very the connection hard. the connection yeah. can go and the timing's really off and you know some people lag didn't happen with us and we've seen them we've seen them act it out as they're going on so say if Connor and Rebecca were uh, talking back and forward Kim was still like acting yeah so he I suppose when, when two characters are acting and there's another character in the scene you can't just stand there and pretend to be doing nothing. Like you're acting as the, you're reacting to their acting. Yeah. So you're you're as just as much as part of that scene as the other two people are. Yeah. So, um, we have to say 
particularly because that is scene one that's the first scene that everyone's going to see when they watch the film it's a very exciting dramatic scene and they done it and we literally could not change anything about that they've yeah. done it perfectly and the way that our emotions were on screen as well I was like convinced I was like oh my god this is so good and yeah. when it, I told them as well I goes think about it. we're in video call yeah. um, acting this out imagine when you get on to film set and we're acting out and then it goes into the editing stage because editing is where everything actually comes together and makes the film even 10 times better than what it would be on the day because um, when people are reading a the script they're like oh this is good yeah I like this mm. but when then you're acting it out that's the second level then the third level is going on the film set and then the final version is seen on edit with the music queued uh, yeah, in and you know everything around all the effects. and I can't wait to see that like, I honestly can't I honestly don't know how they do it on screen because to sit in your kitchen table and to talk to a screen and to act mm. it must be so difficult like as an actor I would imagine you know when you're standing face to face with someone you're bouncing off their reaction you're seeing their mm. body language you know you're getting the vibe off them so like fair play to all of them for doing that on screen I know it's really really tough the way we're in it now but mm. they're just doing it excellently yeah so this this Friday coming where it's it's the second week in the now script out of five yeah. uh, weeks and we're going to be doing it with all the men's group scene now and that's going to be so good I can't yeah. wait to see that Um yeah, but I, I, we're, we're hoping to start filming um, in May, at the end of, maybe mid-May, the end of May. Yeah, um, like hopefully we can't anyway. say anything yet, but we're just, that's what we're aiming for. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I hope we, we yeah. can then. Yeah. Um, and fingers crossed, anyway, yeah. for like so. Like, so much work has gone into this film, I, and I suppose you don't realise it. You think, okay, it's just a bunch of actors and a camera. All they have to do is stand up and say their lines. Hmm. It's not. It's so much more than that. The amount of work it gets... Like for us as the crew, Jesus. the amount of work we go through, we mm. have to do. We have to think of locations, makeup, like yeah, yeah. acting, everything that goes mm. with it. And every single week leading up to this, we're doing something behind the the scenes. Yeah, and the actors are learning their lines. It's we're not. We're trying to for this fun day. We're trying to show people that it's not just right. We do this every now and again. Every single week. We're we have meetings yeah. We're working We're doing this for nothing No one's getting paid for it Which I'm sad about Because yeah. I wish we could pay people If we could we would But yeah. we just can't We don't have that money to pay people But for future products yeah. productions I would like to pay people If I had the finance for it But I don't know So that's why I'm making these funds And hopefully for the next film And so that I can We can raise more as well than what we're looking for now so we can start paying people and that's how mm. I feel. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. Um yeah, so that's 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 it like. What else? Did we miss anything? Not that I know of. Not that I know yeah. of. Like, I, like that's our fun that that's we're, that's we're, all we can say. Like there's nothing much more to say than that. Yeah, like I suppose I just want to say thanks to everyone involved, the crew and the cast, you know, mm. without you we wouldn't be able to do this and I know the amount of work and dedication that everyone has given to this film and mm. we just as a team we just cannot wait to get on set and actually start doing the film because oh, so the chemistry that we've all developed with each other so far it's like we know each other already and we haven't even met half the people yet so yeah. I know when we get on stage it'll be like we're meeting an old friend because it's it's just we're, we're ready for it like we're not ready for it but we're getting there and when we are ready for it yeah. in the next couple of weeks we just we all just want to get out there and do it. Oh yeah, I I when we get on Philip when we get on set that day, no one's gonna be nervous. Everybody's gonna yeah. know each other because we've been we know each other all of us know each other the past five, six weeks now. Yeah, we're talking to each other every week, you know, we're video calling you know, it we're familiar to each other now. And know? I think chemistry is the most important thing when yeah. it comes to cast and crew and yeah. also when we're working together. Um that's for me anyway um, because I'll be I'm the writer of this and I also directing it. Yeah. And I want what I'd love is that while we're on set everybody gets on with each other and mm. everybody's familiar and everybody knows everybody's name yeah. and it's not awkward they're not showing up in the day trying to say oh hi how are you and they meet then it's great that everybody knows each other now yeah. and that's the thing like you need to have good chemistry and we need to feel like we're comfortable working with each other and if you don't know already we have an Instagram page where we're putting up 
daily mm. posts. We're, you know, at the moment we're doing a meet the crew. So we're, we have all of our crew members up there now. We have two days left of it to do and then we're moving on to the cast. So yeah. we're going to be sharing all of our cast members and you'll get a chance to meet them and see who we're talking yeah. about now. Yeah. And hopefully we can get people on to the podcast and we can kind of do a call and, you know, uh, get the actors on and, you know, they can yeah. talk about their experience and so. So hopefully we can do that. But until then, we just have to wait and see and wait this whole thing out and just keep doing rehearsals. And as I said, hopefully by the end of May, we can start filming the fourth scene at least. And oh, yeah. when we start off, so because it's, it's, I can't wait. It's really Yeah. Exciting. So just to recap, we've just finished our first week of fundus, our fundraiser campaign. It goes on for five weeks. It finishes on the 12th of April. So we're going into our second week now and we really appreciate anything you can donate. Uh, we'll leave the link in the description and please check it out if you can. You know, we, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts and without you we wouldn't be able to produce this film. Yeah. Well done, Nicola. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're going to leave it there for today, guys. I know it's like probably, what, five minutes short or so, but that's that's everything we have to say to you about our funded campaign and our next project. and. We have future projects that we're going to be doing. I have two short films already written and planned out. And after this film is finished, we're going to go on to them. We're going to give each other about... We're going to give ourselves about a month's break anyway. We all mm. deserve it after all that work we're doing yeah. since bloody, what, September. But for now, we're focused on the Hitmen. Yeah. We're not thinking about down the line. We're thinking I am. About the I'm t- always thinking about down the line. Well, Don't mind her. <laughs> I'm always thinking about down the you line. You have your head. I always have my head. All the time. In the future. I ne- the present... I'll stay there for a bit, but now I'm gone. Um, so, yeah, the Hitman, link down in the description below. Also, please go check it out. Our Instagram's down below also. And I also think that um, we are in the newspaper also. We are. We're going to be in the Echo newspaper on Thursday, hmm. um, the 18th of March. So, check that out as well. Yeah. Um, as we said already, our radio podcast will be out on Monday, mm-hmm. the 15th of March at 3 o'clock. So, check those out. We'll leave um, the links to those as well down below. Yep. So, well, guys, thanks very much for listening to another episode of the All Right Podcast, episode 81. We literally have 19 more episodes till 100. Jesus. That's mad. I wonder what we're going to do for 100. We'll come up with something special. Yeah, we'll have to. We'll have to for the 100th episode. Probably get a few people on. Mm. Imagine that in a room. That'd be so good. <laughs> right. Well, guys, thanks so much for watching. This has been the RA Podcast. My name's been Anthony. This has been Nicola. Remember, it's not the best podcast. It's not the worst podcast. It's just... The RA Podcast. Guys, thanks for watching. And peace. Bye.